uh, one team finishing at the finish line, another team just taking off. That's right. They were, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Greenfield High School is going into the business end of the boosters there at our, on our uh, model as we see uh, Parish Episcopal. One of our favorite schools from Dallas, Texas, who are uh, joining us now. In fact, they've uh, they've actually won one of our, our pit awards in a previous uh, race. And uh, Chris, you may mention that they actually have a pretty good social media presence as well. Yes, uh, I uh, have been following you all for uh, you know since the beginning of the school year. Uh, a lot of the teams really do a great job of showing their videos on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter, and so it helps us get really engaged and invested in what y'all are doing. And and I get excited as well as everybody to see what y'all have done prior, and then come here and how you apply those skills. And so uh, let's meet the two young ladies that are joining us here in the broadcast booth. Uh, if you would please tell us your name and your grade in school. Um, my name is. Whitney Wheeler and I'm a junior. My name is Katie Wall and I'm a sophomore. All right, ladies, your team actually is doing really well. They just blasted past us just a few seconds ago. You've got a very unique tire design. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So our wheels are made out of cardboard this year, uh, which we got to cut with our new laser cutter, which was very, 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 very fun, even if there were a little bit of fires. But they were very contained. <laughs> they were smolders. <laughs> and we got used to them, and it was very fun. Um, Safety is the important thing. So Safety they are important. seven different layers of 5 8 inch uh, three-ply corrugated cardboard. Um, and so then they are all glued together. Um, but each one is turned one spoke, so they always have like a very strong point hitting the ground. Um, and then they are have a lot of pressure applied when they are being glued together and then treated with polyurethane. And then on the outer level, we have a rubber foam to um, provide a little bit of cushion since we don't have a suspension system, have a thicker rubber holding that all on. And then on our drive side, we have big green chunks of a sewage hose, actually, to provide yes. traction. So how did you come up with the idea to use cardboard, though, for, for a wheel? We found on YouTube videos of someone making a cardboard snowboard and a cardboard Lexus. So we thought, if they can do that, yes, the cardboard Lexus, look it up. It's very, it's very cool. Um, but we thought, if they can do that, then we can do this. So that's how it started. Well, I can't imagine that, you know, using cardboard to hold an engine of a Lexus unless it was just to build the model. But to actually be able to build it to be something sturdy enough to run on this course, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Just one single sheet of our um, cardboard, I think, is weighted for up to 1,100 pounds. So it is incredibly strong and totally durable. Did I hear right that you used seven, seven layers of it? Yes, sir, we did. Yes, seven layers per wheel. Excellent. So you uh, young ladies stay with us here in the broadcast booth as we toss down to Barbara Joe and our next rover. Guess what school are you with? We're with the Academy of Arts, Careers, and Technology in Reno, Nevada. All right. Thank you. And uh, what did you do last night to prepare for today? We geared his gears lower to try to hit the hill to be able to get over it, hopefully. Excellent. Did I give you a little trouble yesterday? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> well, we're anxious to see how this goes today. A good luck and have fun. Thanks very much, Barbara Joe. Yeah, stand warm by uh, by rolling there on the on the rovers there, just kind of uh, back pedaling, keep keeping the muscles warm. Saying by Team Thirteen, uh, but once again we are here with uh, with our team from the Lone Star State, uh, from uh, Parish Episcopal School in Dallas, Texas. So. Um, what are you most proud of when it comes to this particular vehicle? We are very proud of our fold time because last year we had a very complicated way to fold the rover that involved a kickstand and it was kind of a mess. And so, yes, a kickstand. There was a kickstand last year. So this year we saw last year we saw a bunch of other teams have a hinge in the middle and then just flop it down, sit down. So we decided let's do that. And so we did that this year and our full time has improved by about 30 seconds. So it's very happy. So you're hinge, you're hinge, you have to have a hinge pin on the hinge pin, excuse me. Center. And yes, it, it so it, it is um, two pieces of a one inch square tubing on each side and then a, another piece on the inside. So they kind of fit together and they will fold right up kind of like that. And then you just literally pull them apart and they flop back down. And we have a system with a spring right in the middle. So it'll clamp right down around that um, hinge together and keep it all in place while we race. So there's no worries about it popping up, uh, back in the middle of when, in the middle of the race? It shouldn't. We've, uh, through our testing, we found that most of the time it does not. So how did you test your, your rover? Ride it downstairs, that kind of thing? Um, no, at our school, we just we drove around the parking lot a lot because there are little speed bumps that are very similar to those little bumps of uh, gravel on the course. Uh, and we also have a giant green hill that was similar to the, the dreaded Martian Butte that <laughs> is a pain. <laughs> so we tested on that and sheared off the three 
three or four spring, three or four pins. spring pins. But um, so we tested it uh, around our school. <laughs> and yes. We have a tendency to try and break it before we bring it. Um, so yes. we like to <laughs> put it through as much as we can before we bring it here and uh, completely make it fall apart. Oh, well, that's a good strategy, believe me. <laughs> How about uh, on this rover, knowing you all are returning teams, how much of this rover is original from last year? How much is it completely redesigned? Are you borrowing ideas? You're talking about the, the wheel challenge, uh, the pin, the hinge pin system. How much of the things that you're using from last year are just completely new? Um, well, we did originally take last year's iframe idea. Um, that was something new from our very first year to our second year. But that kind of is the one thing that is similar. We have changed our drivetrain dramatically. Um, our gear ratio is very different, and the way we've actually fitted our axles is very different as well. Um, so before they've had just the bearings sitting inside little pieces of one by two um, steel, and now it's actually press fit into a tube, so it's all protected and all that weight is properly distributed. Um, so there's been a lot of changes, but they're, you know, still, we're taking ideas, you know, based off of what we've seen and what we've done. So you're planning for next year already? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. As soon as we get back, we have a team meeting, and we start thinking about what we're going to do. Yes. You know, that, uh, once again, we continue to, you know, tie everything that we're dealing with at Rover Challenge into real-world skills, and that's exactly what we do in our office. Once we complete an event, we always go back and have some kind of lessons learned uh, meeting where we get together what worked, what didn't work, how we plan for, even if it's a year off, because that's usually the best time. Get together right after the event, get all those ideas out of your head right then, and prepare for next year. And so it's great to see you all are like that and working on that. And this young lady who's joining us here, uh, I wanted to check your earrings out. From this point of view, I can see one that says space. I'm curious what the one on the other side says. Cadet. 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 Space Cadet. <laughs> space Cadet. Really great stuff. And so uh, really appreciate you all joining us and, and you know participating year after year. Uh, here in the Rover Challenge. So what do you guys uh, plan on doing once you once you graduate? I know you, you still got a couple of years to worry about that kind of thing. Um, so I am, right now I'm kind of in between, but I'm looking at a double major in business management and industrial engineering with a minor in astronomy. So that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. Oh, you underachiever. <laughs> what about you? I have no idea. I honestly have no idea. Well, you think this, this may be the direction you want to go? Possibly. I, I love engineering and I also love English. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, believe me, I'm, I'm in this exact same boat. Um, so what do you think you're taking away from uh, this particular challenge that you'll be able to use, though, in the future? So many lessons about planning and testing and uh, work. Because, you know, it is a lot of hard work, but it's, it's, it's so much fun. And just and teamwork, working a lot well as a team, and communication, especially when you're working on a giant project, communication is key. And we have journals online and whenever we work on something we put it in our journals so that other people can see it and it's uh, it's um on google so it's uh, public access to everyone on the team and so they can go in and we log what we do so other people can see it and see what we did if we did something that didn't work how it didn't work and so uh mistakes will be repeated when we look at the journals so, yeah, and so many things that are so many things that are applicable to to other areas not just in the scientific realm what about you um, well, I definitely think that I have grown as a leader um, through this program. So I was part of the inaugural team, and um, this year I'm actually team captain. So I have definitely had to push some people and make things happen, but I am definitely proud of how we've all come together and how I've learned to lead these people in different ways with the different kinds of people that we do have on the team. Well, guys, we really appreciate you taking the time. Your team has fell passing us here in the broadcast area and, and heading back towards where we're going to let you go to uh, cheer them on the rest of the way well, and finish it. Con again, congratulations on being here. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, we hope to see you back next year, of course, oh, from uh, Parish Episcopal <laughs> School in Dallas, Texas. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you all at the word ceremony later. Good luck. Thank you. And so uh, from this uh, vantage point here, we can see uh, the Dallas Paris Episcopal. And so uh, that's a great shot of the side of their wheels, the cardboard wheels that she just got to talking about. Uh, cardboard wheels, which caught the eye of several teams. So as we did interviews yesterday with all the teams, uh, I, I specifically remember one of them talking about how they were really impressed with the cardboard use for that high school. They weren't sure that which one it was, but they were going to actually try to steal that idea and apply that for next year. And so on the course now uh, is the Academy of Arts, Careers, and Technology from Reno, Nevada. 
Uh, this is usually one of the powerhouse teams, one of the teams to beat uh, year after year. Uh, they come here and, and perform well. 2011, their first year of the event, uh, they walked away with the Rookie of the Year award. In 2012, they came in seventh place. Uh, 2012, they also walked away with the Featherweight Award. In 2013, they had the Neil Armstrong Best Design Award. And in 2000, that was 13, and then 14, first place. And so this team is always uh, one of our perennial uh, tough competitors. And yesterday, they were able to post a final time of 12 minutes for the Academy of Arts Career Technology, 12 minutes and one second. Now, that's their final time after penalties are incurred. They The raw time, of the course, was 10.27. So they completed at 10.27. Then you add a few more seconds uh, as we see uh, them right now trying to uh, work the Martian Butte. And we're off and running over that first Martian-themed terrain. And then from there, they go on to uh, the next three Martian-themed obstacle courses that we have here at the United States Space Rocket Center for 2016 Rover Challenge. And all day long, we continue to talk about social media, and we encourage all our fans, viewers, and friends around the world to follow us on your favorite social media platform. If you use the hashtag Rover Challenge, use that hashtag Rover Challenge. You can follow us on, uh, find us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. We are broadcasting live on Ustream right now, and uh, not only do we enjoy taking the time to talk about what's going on here at Rover Challenge, but also engage with our fans as we watch the uh, Paris Episcopal School cross the finish line right there. And, and from this vantage point, we get another shot of what those young ladies just talked about, which was uh, the green material they used for grip and traction on their rover. So we're proud to have them here again. Uh, very, very innovative designs on their rover. As we've seen uh, throughout the board, as we watch the uh, AAC team from Reno, Nevada, continue on the course.